What's up guys, welcome back to another video. We're here with Shiv, we're downtown Ottawa, and we're here with Dhruv, mobile photography gunslinger, as he likes to call him. He's been doing mobile photography strictly for about a year, so he's here to help us share a couple of her tips. Here are some of his photos. So we're gonna break this video down into three parts. The first part is gonna be just your phone. All you get is one single lens. Like anyone walking around the street, quickly pick up your phone and take a photo. We're also gonna be using just the ability to use exposure compensation. So bring your exposure up or down, but that's just really much. We're gonna be giving you tips on how to take bangers just like that. This is gonna be the timestamp for that part. The second part, we're gonna be upping the ante for those of you who wanna get more advanced. We're gonna be adding on things like manual mode, attachable lenses, internal lenses, and other tips to make your mobile photography top class. This is gonna be the timestamp for that part. And the final part, I'm gonna be talking you guys through how to edit on mobile, the best app, and how to use Lightroom Mobile because I think that is the best app. This is gonna be the timestamp for that part. You ready? Yep. Let's do it. So the first tip I'm gonna give you guys is all about composition. You gotta learn your eye for photography to get the good angles. A couple rules to learn are things like the rule of thirds, leading lines, focus, exposure. We're gonna demonstrate some of these tips right now. Leading lines are basically lines which lead to a particular destination, maybe the horizon, maybe a subject which is far, far away. And it creates a tunnel effect, you can say that. Yeah. Using the leading lines right here, all these lines are leading to just one subject. We can wait for a subject or we can just put a subject there. Second tip I have for you guys is about exposure compensation. So when you are taking a photo, when you overexpose a photo, the highlights cannot keep as much data as the shadows themselves. So you want to underexpose a photo because it will save your bacon in editing. So what I'm gonna do here, and most phones can do this feature, is just tap on the subject or anywhere on the photo and you can just press the or hold the little sun and pretty much drop the shadows there. Now you can see the background is also, you know, not overexposed and he is a little underexposed, but that can be easily fixed in editing. So we're gonna show you guys the rule of thirds real quickly using, again, Shiv. So we're gonna put him on the stairs there. So if you put on a three by three grid, it's gonna split your image into nine different sections. What you wanna do with the rule of thirds is put your subject on one of these lines, either vertical or horizontal. So we're gonna do this here. As you can see, I'm not framing him right in the center. All right, so the next tip is about keeping what's important in your frame. And that boils down to, if you don't want something in your frame, you just have to like change your perspective, you change your angle or something, or yeah, crop, crop it in post. I would say like moving your camera is, is a better option because uh, obviously like quality and conversion, all that shit that comes afterwards. Don't digital zoom. And that's like a grandpa tip that I'll give. Cool. Don't do that because that is going to look what does it do? Well, when you when you're zooming in, yeah, uh, on your on your let's say on your phone, you're zooming in, right? So you're basically getting your pixels like kind of uh, less messed pixels, up. yeah, right? less pixels, and it's gonna be more like grainy. And even though the original photo might have not been grainy, it's still gonna be uh, look like you know it's gonna look grainy and yeah. So the quality is not gonna be there. All right, you can like take an example over here, like these cars. Like just move a bit like this. Yeah. That's like removing the subject from from your frame. Yeah. Take a photo first this way. So let's say we, we're taking this frame, right? So you see this parking spot thingy, what yeah. they call it? Uh, it's coming in parking frame, Parking meter. Right? Yeah, parking meter, sorry. We don't have that in India, so. <laughs> let's say uh, you take a photo with it, and then you physically move away, and then you take the photo. That's with removing the subject, right? Yeah. So the removing uh, the parking thing, you take a photo. So okay. that's gonna create a huge difference in your photos. This is just a basic example, so you can like, apply this rule to any photo you're taking. Yeah, so in the end, guys, your feet are your best gimbal, as Shiv said it. Move your feet if you want to get a different perspective. You know, sometimes you just got to take a couple steps forward to get that parking meter out of the photo. Very basic example, of course, but it can be applied in any photography. One tip, don't always shoot at eye level. Like, yeah. always change your angles, like, from above or below, depending on what the subject is or how he or she is posed. Yeah, when you're going to work, you're at eye level, right? You're, you're living your life at this level. So a tip I'll give you is you want to look for those perspectives that no one is seeing on a daily basis. Get low, get high. This is why drone shots are so popular nowadays because it's such a different perspective that's never been seen. So get different perspectives. Never forget to look up. Yeah. Can give can give you a lot of new perspectives which you might not know. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about. Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it boys.
so Trouve was just showing me some of his photos he took. This is like way back, like I took this last year on my iPhone 7. Where did the lighting come from and what's the background? Okay, so this was actually my room. I, uh, the window I had was kind of, you know, the, those diffused yeah. windows that you have. For the background, uh, for the surface, I was looking for, for something to, you know, like put, put the watch on. <laughs> find any then I saw my sock so I was like okay I'll just throw this in and yeah I just uh, took a couple of photos you know changing my angle did you use any special lenses for it no no lenses no nothing it was on the on the native camera that I got yeah. the iPhone 7 yeah it's crazy this is literally tack sharp yeah it just shows you how insane the phone can really be okay guys so we're here in the art center we just finished part one this is part two so this is for the people who want to get a little more advanced with mobile photography so the number one tip we're gonna give you guys to start shooting in manual mode on your phone most phones have this most new phones have this feature samsung oneplus and huawei like he said those those ones have it and pretty much what you're going to do is on most phone applications just swipe up you'll be able to find pro mode professional mode manual okay. mode whatever it's called in here you'll usually have the choices to you change your iso your white balance your shutter speed your focus point and uh, your exposure compensation. And these are pretty good tools to pretty much get different types of exposures, which we're gonna to explain to you guys in a bit. If your phone doesn't natively have it, try downloading Lightroom Mobile. In the app, if you press the photo button and take a photo via the app, you can press down here in the bottom left corner, professional, and then you'll have access to all these settings like white balance, ISO, shutter speed, focus, and all that stuff. And if you don't know what any of this means, I would recommend doing your research just, I'll leave a link in the bio to different explanations, simple explanations of what the settings do, but this will get you a lot more control over the image. And another bonus tip to get more creative with it is using other modes in your camera. Most cameras have portrait mode, which is pretty much a mode where it'll take your subject, it'll choose it via AI technology and it'll blur out all the background. Some phones it's good on, OnePlus, it's not great. I hear the iPhone has a pretty good portrait mode. Play around with that. And also panorama mode is great for not only taking horizontal panoramas, but you can also take vertical panoramas of building. He gave me a good piece of advice. If your camera is not wide enough for a certain shot, just grab that panorama of that shot and you get in that little extra that you need for your portrait or landscape photo. So I wanna demonstrate the power of manual mode and especially the focus peaking for when you're choosing your focus. So I'm gonna use a tool here. I have a little bit of uh, starlight. This is gonna create great bokeh in the background. So do you wanna stand right there? So from here, if I get closer to Trub, I'm able to come to the focus and I'm able to change it. And in doing so, I can select front of my lens. Just gonna change my settings up real quick. It's not perfect, but it allows me to create bokeh balls in the background. And yeah, that's the advantages of using that instead of portrait mode, because it's actually real depth. Portrait mode is fake blur that the AI is adding in, which doesn't look great. Manual mode, you have, you know, the flexibility of changing your shutter speed, your ISO, your focus, your white buttons and all this. Uh, but using, like, auto, it's, it's gonna let the photo's gonna do the, all the work for you. This is a really good example. Like, I took a photo of him jumping. So it was on the auto mode, so it adjusted uh, the shutter according to the scene by itself. So, like, it it gave a, a motion blur. Yeah. So with this, you have the advantage of changing your shutter speed and avoiding that, that problem of losing your frame. So the last thing you can do to boost your photography is bring out some external or internal lenses. Most cameras nowadays, have two lenses, usually like a 28 millimeter and a telephoto, which is something more like maybe 100 millimeters. That's what my phone has. The iPhone has like four cameras now, what the XLR it has three cameras. Using these lenses is a lot better than using digital zoom. Going through the optics and you're not actually degrading the image by losing the quality. So make sure you're using your internal camera if you want to zoom or if you want to get an even wider shot. There are alternatives to people who don't actually have more than one lens. And a really popular one right now is the moment lenses and Dhruv has them. So he's going to walk you through all the different lenses that he has and he uses and we're gonna show some example photos of the crazy photos you can get with this so like if you want to use any moment lens you need to get the case for your phone they have most of the iPhone and Samsung's and OnePlus yeah so I actually have four lenses okay first one I got was the macro uh, this is actually a really solid lens to get you know like really close-up shots what this lens is gonna do is the focus distance is really less like you had to get really up close to get it in focus there's yes. some examples of that This is a telephoto lens, it's a 58 uh, millimeter. So this is basically your telephoto for uh, close-up shots. I got the anamorphic, the classic, classic Michael Bay kind of a look that you get. How does the anamorphic work exactly? I don't know if you can see the, the flare that it has. It has a, a squeeze of 1.33. So like when you're shooting, it actually shoots squeezed. And then on post, you add a de-squeeze, so it'll get uh, an aspect ratio of 21 is to yeah. 9 or something. Do you ever use it for oh, photo? Oh yeah, I've, I've actually shot a couple of photos that are really sick. Okay. Like with, with the flare and stuff. 
And the last lens that I would recommend highly, the Moment Wide. So this is an 18 millimeter. Once you put that on, you get a wide, you know, field of view. Really help you in, you know, making your composition and get really get those wider shots yeah. in tight spaces. Yeah. So the final, final tip for you guys, the people who can shoot manual exposure will usually have a function of shooting raw photos. What raw photos is, is it's an uncompressed file. Most files nowadays are shot on JPEG, which is a compressed file, easy to be shared, not a lot of space they take. A raw photo is uncompressed, a lot of data is saved in the photo. If you shoot a black and white raw photo, you can actually recover all of that color data because it's all still there, it's uncompressed. So how you're gonna do this, I'm quickly gonna show you in my phone how you can change to raw photo on the OnePlus, and you can also do it on the Lightroom mobile app. If your phone has manual function, you have to test this with the phone you have, just research you know, how to take a raw photo on whatever your phone is, or how to go on manual mode on your phone. Here, swipe up, I'm gonna go into pro mode. At the top, you can see it's gonna say raw. You can have raw off or raw on. And you're gonna see these photos, they're gonna come up as DNG image. This is pretty much the Adobe version of raw photos. Easy for Adobe apps to, to read and process and things like that. So that's what we're gonna do. Make sure you're taking your photos in raw if you have the option. It'll make your editing experience a lot better. So now we're gonna head out. He's gonna be using these moment lenses. Shiv is gonna be showing you guys manual exposure and how to use that to create, you know, some crazy exposure. Okay, so welcome to part three of the mobile photography tutorial. In this section, we are gonna be talking about editing. I'm going to be running through on my phone three of my favorite mobile editing apps, some of the best apps out there. Also, I'm gonna go in depth on one of them on how to edit. So hopping into the phone here, the first app I'm gonna talk about is an app called Pixaloop. Now this app doesn't have anything to do with changing the tones of your images or anything like that, but what it does is it creates cinema graphs. And it's a really cool app because it's free and this is something that's usually tough to do. I'm just gonna press new project here. I'm gonna show you guys what it pretty much does. I'm gonna choose this photo that I took. Pretty much I'm gonna show you here. At the bottom, you're gonna have all these options. What you can do is you can animate things in your photo. Um, so this photo pretty much becomes like a 3D visual photo and you can even add audio if you wanna make it a little more interesting, you could say. So I'm gonna show you how it works here. I'm just gonna press animate. I'm gonna choose path and then I'm gonna take these clouds here. I'm gonna send them all in the direction of the right. One thing you have to do though is you have to anchor the points that you don't want to move. So pretty much along the edge here of my building because I don't want my building being animated. I want that to be stable. I'm just gonna put some anchor points. Now if you press play, you see that the clouds are moving to the right here. You can also change the speed of that if you want it to go faster, slower. You can freeze areas, you can unfreeze areas, you can even loop areas. So that's a really cool app and you can do a lot of cool things in the app. You can even, you know, add overlays, element overlays here if I want to add like some rain. So now like it looks like it's a rainy day. It doesn't look that great, but I will say the animating feature is really cool. Next is the app Unfold. Now Unfold doesn't change the color of your image, doesn't make you add more contrast or anything, but it's a collage. Many people like this, especially for Instagram, is being able to make collages. They have a lot of cool templates. For example, they have the film frames template, so it makes it look like these were shot on film photos. They also have sort of ripped paper templates. It just makes it really easy to do storytelling with your mobile images. I do this all the time. Let's say I go on a little walk around the park, take a couple images, maybe three or four, make a little photo series. Now I can just press the plus button, add a title to your story, and I like how they call 
about stories because photography is a lot of storytelling. Let's say walk in the park, press okay, and then this is gonna open up here and now you can add your templates. You can scroll to the bottom. Some of the templates are paid. I will be honest, you're limited to maybe, you know, four slides of templates if you go for free, but they're still amazing templates and they look amazing. I'm just gonna choose one here that I paid for. Um, let's say this one right here. It shows you two little ripped papers. You can just press plus. Let me just add like two random images. And then you can even add at the bottom, you can add text, sticker, like I can add some duct tape, but it's a really cool app to create stories through your images, especially through mobile. If you're on the go and you just want to create a little cool Instagram story that not a lot of people, you know, would expect, then you can do this on Unfold. Now the last app and the app that I've been talking about is Lightroom Mobile. This app has pretty much all the features that the paid, I think it's around $15 a month, Lightroom CC has on the desktop. This app has some crazy features. This app is really good for anyone doing mobile photography. If you're not gonna get any single app, get this app, it's free, helps you organize all your photos. You can start creating presets. If you don't know what the presets are, it's pretty much your settings. You can paste them onto different images. Your Instagram feed looks similar, or if you just wanna get a quick, really, really good edit on an image, you can just put your preset on, make a couple adjustments, and you're good to go. It's all done on your phone, so you can do it anytime you want. Here, I have six photos that I took while we were, we were downtown. I'm just gonna start with this one of the train here. I'm gonna run through a couple settings at the bottom. So the main settings here is called the light settings. This will let you change your exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, all the main functions that you need when you're editing. If you don't know what any of these functions are, I did make a Lightroom Mobile Master class. So it gives you, runs through, through all of these functions and what they do. You can check that video out right here. It'll go in depth on all these things, but this is where you can make your minor adjustments. Let's say this photo was overexposed. And this right here is an example of the advantages of shooting shooting in raw because this photo was shot in raw. You can see this photo is overexposed. It looks like those highlights won't be recovered, but you can just drop your exposure and those highlights are easily recovered because the raw images will keep a lot more data. Now you can just make your minor adjustments, add some highlights, drop the shadows, add a little more contrast. You can even come up here to the curve if you know how to use the curve. Moving on, color is the next one. This will let you change your white balance, which you can add more blue into the image, which is what I'm gonna do here to make it a little more blue. Or you can make the image a little more warmer as well. You can do add saturation and vibrance. At the top here, in the mix, you're gonna be able to select and edit the colors individually. So here, if I wanna change the yellow on this uh, road here, I can pretty much change the hue of the yellow completely. You can see now it's like more of an orange, now it's more of a green. Let me make an orange, add some more saturation to it, add some more brightness or less brightness. And, and it really lets you change all the colors themselves. Moving on to effects, this lets you add clarity, which is a very popular uh, sharpening kind of uh, tool, I would say. Add texture to, if your image, you want more texture, you know, more detail in the dirt and everything like that. Add a vignette at the bottom, this will put in a black or or a white contour to help draw your eye to the subject in the middle. Moving on, sharpening. Sharpening does what sharpening, you know, says. It pretty much sharpens the image. It'll make all the corners of the image more, you know, detailed. Coming back all the way to the start here, the last function you might need is crop tool. If you don't know what cropping is, then you know you gotta you gotta hurry up here because cropping is pretty obvious. Four by five obviously is there for Instagram, so you can crop it for your Instagram. Finally, the last thing I'll show you how to do is save presets. Presets are gonna be here at the bottom. Then you can press on that and you can press these three little buttons and press create a preset. This will save all those settings you just put on this image into a quick preset. So now I can go to my preset and let's say I want to use this preset, bang, automatically applied to image and I don't really have to do anything and it lets you do quick, quick edits. I'm just going to drop the exposure, make a little fix and there you go. I have a full edit and in one click. So those are the functions you can use in Lightroom Mobile. This is a great app. It also features a lot of organizing functions. For example, here I made myself an album. This lets you, you know, organize photos by, you know, events or by days, things like that. So you can just press plus, you can press plus, you can create a folder or an album. Album. Album's gonna go inside a folder, but a folder can't go inside of an album. And then at the top, you can go to all photos, of course, and you can see all the photos you've ever imported. This was edited on Lightroom Mobile, and you can see the detail there in the in the wolf. Here's another example of a crazy shot, and this was shot on my phone, actually, and edited through Lightroom Mobile. Yeah, so that's Lightroom Mobile. Download it now, use it now. It's an amazing app. One of my favorite apps, honestly. If you wanna get into photography, even if you just bought a DSLR and you're wondering how do I edit my photos, get Lightroom Mobile. Hope you guys enjoyed. The last thing I'll say is the great thing about mobile photography is the phone is always on you. Who doesn't carry a phone around literally all the time? So it really lets you just take photos of your daily life, document your daily life. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you guys in the next one.